like okay we don't have resources to be like oh what's a drag queen i can look like and we're judged so harshly we're just like there's like drag kings are boring and stuff and it's like you don't know the work that we have to do to Absolutely. i mean i'm older like i'm i'm in my mid-30s and i know my references but the younger generation it's you know there's not as many like uh, in my eyes big male pop stars as there were in the 80s and 90s so right. for, for sure. me mm -hmm. yeah so it's like harder to get a reference so let me ask you this why do you think that we have had 16 seasons of drag race and we have yet to see a drag king for me to say the reasons that i mentioned earlier i feel like they're stuck in what they think is going to sell so they're not open to letting someone brand new brand new even though we're not new challenge themselves to make the challenges work yeah because I've, I've i've said forever like you don't have to make that many changes people think that it's like oh well what about the acting challenges you just make the king do one of the characters what what is so difficult about kings can do all that too kings can wear big fluffy wigs and heels they can wear dresses men wear dresses like why can't kings wear dresses as male presenting it's the same thing it's not crazy to think of especially now in our world where we're like being shown and and celebrating this androgyny of male models and male fashion there's so much androgyny there where why can't that be represented on the show i think people aren't open to the idea of letting a king challenge himself to make himself work in that show and 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 i and i'm glad that you're saying it because you're like i listen i'm up for this challenge i'm up for it Throw i'm me on, it. i'm over it yeah. i'm over it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you like, Landon's already won a show. Like, Landon is, like, you know, like, me, like, even after I won, I still have very, very heavy thought of trying to audition. And I know that Drag Race is not interested in casting anyone that's already been on another reality show of drag reality show. Like, I know that's, that's one of the first things that they'll check off of a hard no right away. Um, but I still thought about it heavily. I just don't. I don't want to compete anymore. Yeah. I feel like I, I'm a great judge and I'm, I'm happy judging. I'm happy to be a, a regular at Belated Brothers Dragula. I was happy to be a regular season judge on Call Me Mother. I'm, I'm, I like that position. Um, and I don't see myself having fun on Drag Race. Got it. So why would I want to do I, it? I will you know? tell you this. For me. I will tell you. But I'm constantly at being like constantly rallying and being an activist for other yeah. drag kings. I will never stop doing that. Just because I don't want to do it doesn't mean I don't think drag kings should be able yeah. to do it. And I want to get your response to Neroni really quick. But before we do that, I wanted to tell uh, Landon really quick. I, I think that I, I think you're right with the fact that you're, the whole reality thing and the fact that you did we freeze? Oh no. There we go. Okay. The fact that you were like on a reality show, but you are also one of the best in the business. And I think that if they are going to look for someone to represent a community and just have one, I think that does give you an upper hand. I really think that they would be like, so I, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like, not, I get it. You, if you don't think you're going to have fun doing it, then don't fucking do it. But, um, I, I, I don't think you should like, not want to do it because you've been on a reality show because i think that that's probably going to be like listen if there's if there's a drag king that we're going to get for this i think this might be the one do you know what i mean yeah, um, no, no, i'm not i'm not against it because i was on a drag king show i just know that production has i I, I live in LA. I hear the whispers and the winds. Yeah. I know all of the tea about all of the shit that goes down all the time. I know a lot of things. And I know that they have rejected multiple people based on, clearly on the fact that it's because they competed on, yeah. on, on Dragula or other competition shows. Gotcha. So, you know, um, but they have my phone number. Farron literally has called me before for other projects with World of Wonder. I, they know who I am. They know I exist. They know how to contact me. So if they wanted me, they know how to find me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tadirani, what do you think? No, I think I, I definitely agree. I think that the, I think the reason why there hasn't been a drag king yet, I think it's complacency. 
I think it's, you know, it's just like, you know, why, why change something if I don't have to change it? Um, and I think that it is, um, it's, it, it's really going to take someone to take a risk and, and just, you know, push <laughs> to make changes. And I think that as soon as, I mean, as soon as that happens, I would love like for there to be another pl platform that's just for Kings, because I think that drag King, the drag King world in itself, I think is the people who are well known at the same time is there's not enough. Right. Uh, the fact, the fact that when people think of drag Kings, it's me and Landon, mm -hmm. like there's so many uh, other drag Kings. The fact that there's not a lot of people think about black drag Kings. There's so many black drag kings that are out there that I respect so much. And I just think that we need to bring them up to platforms that drag race girls have. And, yeah. and it's just, it's going to be a hard job, but I mean, Which, I'm, I'm not mad at, You're at it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would be down too, like I talked about. I've, I've auditioned multiple times. Um, I've been open about those that conversation, but you know, it is what it is. Well, I, I want to say uh, thank you so much for being open to this uh, uh, conversation. Um, you know, I, I said it earlier. I uh, I, I think with so, with opinions, we all have different opinions, and um, I, I think that we should normalize having different of opinions. When our opinions don't line up, doesn't mean that it's hate speech or we're fighting or this or that. But um, I think we should just have discussions about them and. Um, I, I, I came to this discussion with an open mind. Um, I hear you. And the information that I'm getting is received. Um, I never meant to dismiss you from this huge platform that would obviously be a huge stepping stone for anyone who considers himself a drag king. Um, you know, because that's not what, what I want. Um, but it is refreshing to hear you both say, fuck it, I'll risk it, I'll be the one, let's just do it. And, um, and, and that's what I'm hearing. It's like, yeah, why the fuck not? You know what I mean? Um, so I, I'm glad that, you know, I, I hear you guys say that. Um, I would like to add one thing. Yeah. I know it kind of sounds like you might be wrapping up, maybe. Um, no, go ahead, go so, No, no, so we don't have to. So I wanted to add how um, hypocritical it is that the fandom celebrates and uplifts the queen so hard when they do male presenting looks either on the on the runway or in snatch game and and but they still don't they still fight against the king represented on the show when we're constantly and more and more and more seeing queens do male looks and and male characters and it i get it because it started off in the earlier seasons with like right. milk being rejected and um Milan as Janelle Monet getting critiqued negatively because she was in a suit. Um, but I feel like those arguments left with Santino because we started to see <laughs> Kennedy, like Kennedy be celebrated as a little Richard. And then we had like Mo Hart with that like leather daddy, um, mm -hmm. kid and play look. And then we have Safira just a couple weeks ago as James Brown and like killing it as male yep. characters. And it's still like this weird thing that well, it's only okay when a drag queen does it. And like, that is the misogyny speaking. Yeah. That is the patriarchy speaking. And I think that it's hard to reflect that in a lot of the viewers when that's their argument yeah. over and over again. And, and, and I think, especially with the examples that you gave, I think it's, it's, it, it's pretty, uh, pretty simple to say, good drag is just good drag, good drag. period. That's yeah. it. That's it. Even good if you're drag wearing, is just good drag. Um, like uh, stage shoes, or what was the joke for Safira? She was wearing oh, those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little character here, little character here. Yeah, I mean, it's good drag. Even though she was wearing those little heels. Yeah. So yeah. Like... <laughs> um, before we we wrap up, I just um, I I want you if there's a message that you can really give to someone who either has any apprehension about a drag king being on a show. Uh, on this show, um, what what message, like, do you want, how do you, I'm not saying convince anyone, because that's not what I want you to do. I'm not trying to say, you know, you need to, da, 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 da. it's not that, but it's sort of like, um, tell us what and why it is that your drag needs to be 
respected and elevated to the same level as anyone else who's been on this show. Go, Which go first. I keep like I'm stepping over to learn a lot. I just no, like, no, ah! no. So like, no, no. You go first. Go first. Go first. Um, I think I think the main thing is it's for me. I drive it home a lot, but I also will always respect everyone that came before me, whether it comes for women who fought for my my rights as a woman now or as a queer person or just in general, like I will always respect the fight that came before me for me to live where I live now. And I think people forget and don't even realize that Kings have been around just as long. We've been sharing the stages. We had have, we have immensely, immensely successful Kings in the past when we were called male impersonators and drag queens were called female impersonators. Like people don't understand that the history is long, it's rich, it's beautiful. And Kings were at the top of that list as well, making more money than female queens, making touring internationally before drag queens were. Like it, it was massive. And I think unfortunately things evolve and it fall, evolved in a different way for us. But why can't the future, the present sometimes re reflect the past when it comes with the successes that people experience, yeah. you know, like we're always growing and going future and growing forward, but we forget to look at the past and realize that there were successes back then too. Now, I think history mm -hmm. is important for a lot of people to remember because people always want to only think of what's happening now, forgetting right. what happened then. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think for me as a drag king, um, the idea of drag kings on drag race and people not liking that is, I think the idea is like, I'm not asking you to have to like my drag. I'm just asking you for the opportunity to let me show you my drag. And um, I think I always make this metaphor and it's like, when you go to the buffet, <laughs> there's so many different types of food. No one's telling you that you have to eat all of the food, but it's presented there. <laughs> And it's available for people who would like to partake. And I think of drag in the same way. When I go to a drag show, I want to see a sprinkling of every like type of drag. So I'd love to see that reflected in my favorite drag shows, in my favorite resources of drag, in my favorite, you know, um, platforms that I see drag. So why not? I think that's a great way to put it. Um, you might not like what I do, but... I need to be given the same opportunity as everybody else, period. That's it. it, it, it and, and I always say it's like, you know, and, and I, I get some hate about, you know, my drag because it's just, it's to them. It, it, and I, when I say them, I'm like, you know, the, the, the toxic fandom part. Um, you know, I don't wear very extravagant makeup. So that equates to boring makeup. So it's like, you don't have to like what I do. But you know what you do have to do is respect it. And along with that comes opportunity. Just like I need the same opportunities that everybody else is getting. So I absolutely understand. And I think that that's a great way to put it. Listen, you might not like what I do, but I should be given the same opportunities as everyone else that does exactly what I do. Mm -hmm. So with that said, I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for having an open mind and an open heart to have this conversation. Um, I think things like this need to happen more often. Um, I, I think rather than, you know, the, the internet trolls and attacking and responding, I said, you know, those things are not effective. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like, it's, I feel like it's conversations like this because I'm sure that there's people watching right now that are like, okay, okay. I get it. You know what I mean? And I, and I think it, we need more room for that. Um, but to do these things, there needs to be a little less judgment. You know what I mean? And more listening. You know what I mean? Because everyone is so quick to be like, well, our, our thoughts don't align. So yeah. come on. You know what I yeah. mean? And it's like, yeah. no, we need to, let's talk. You know what I mean? And it's okay to disagree. Um, but I think that at the end of this conversation, I think we're all in, in the same place. Um, you, you deserve the same exact opportunities that I have been given, um, and in no way that I mean that you shouldn't. Um, and if you felt that, I apologize, because that is not really, you know, what I wanted or to convey in any kind of way. 
Um, again, thank you guys so much. I'm so grateful. Um, do you want to let everyone know that maybe they're not following you, where they can follow you, where they can see you next, and any upcoming projects that you may have that you want to share? I mean, I'm linked here from my Instagram, my Insider, and all socials, um, except Twitter, because fuck that place. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, you can see me on um, old seasons of Dragula. You can keep an eye out for me. I'll be a guest on a couple of um, um, Mom Presents uh, podcasts coming up. And just keep an eye out. I always have stuff working on, so just keep an eye out. Awesome. Yeah, um, you can catch me online. I'm Tenderoni88 on all my platforms. Um, if you're in Chicago tonight, I'm judging an all drag king <laughs> competition. Nice. Survivor <laughs> Fantasy Nightclub, 11 p.m. Please come because the kings are amazing. And I, it makes me so happy to see these kings do so well. And um, catch me at Roscoe's on Saturday for XYZ Brunch. <laughs> Love it. <There> you, <laughs> you know, I always say... I always say there are fans of RuPaul's Drag Race and there's fans of drag. If you are a fan of drag, you should definitely be showing up to these shows. Go go to Fantasy, go check out a good drag show, a good drag competition. And if you've never seen Drag Kings before and you're in Chicago, I encourage you even more so, um, so that you are definitely uh, exposed to such a beautiful uh, art. You definitely have to check them out. Um, again, thank you guys start so much. It doesn't have to end on live shows. Like uh, supporting your artists online Ab is just as absolutely. helpful. Like it, it, it showcases so likes, comments, shares, um, all of that really, really helps supporting your drag artists as well. Absolutely. Thank you both mm -hmm. so much. I appreciate you both. Continue Thank to you. do what you do. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right. I don't know how to disconnect it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, I thought that went really well. Um, again, thank you so much to uh, Landon and Tenderoni. Um, comments are back on, by the way. Um, I'm so grateful for, for them uh, coming and having a chat with me. If anyone who has any doubts or is thinking of anything, um, there you go. You just listen to the whole interview. Um, I'm so grateful for this. I think we need to create more spaces like this and have more open uh, conversations, uh, things that either we don't understand with, disagree with, or have different opinions on. And let's, let's normalize having a difference of opinion and that being okay, because it, it, it's opening uh, a gateway to conversations that we need to have that allows us to learn and grow. This cancel culture needs to stop already. It just needs to stop. It's ridiculous. There's no way that you give uh, people an opportunity to learn and grow when your opinion doesn't align with theirs. It's just not fair. It's cruel. And it just needs to stop. Um, I appreciate everyone that has logged on to this. Uh, I will upload this onto my YouTube channel. I want to do more things like this. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do with my YouTube channel. And now I feel like this is my calling. I definitely want to shed light on uh, all subjects that just need uh, a, a bigger platform. Um, I'm grateful that I was able to do this, uh, that they were able to do this with me. Thank you for everyone that tuned in. I'm so, so grateful. Um, okay, I love you guys. Uh, I'm gonna upload this on my YouTube channel and it's at Nasha Lopez. If you're not following me, uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget to subscribe to Roscoe's uh, Tavern. Uh, I'm there every single Friday where this gig all started. <laughs> so go ahead and uh, log, uh, subscribe to Roscoe's, subscribe to at Nisha Lopez, uh, where you get uh, all the tea at Roscoe's for everything RuPaul's Drag Race. I love you guys. Thank you so much for always being so supportive. And thank you for tuning in. Mwah!